right, let's get right into it. So now we've already talked about a stimulus and we know we're gonna think about our stimulus like a noun. So it's gonna be a person, place, thing, or a condition, or it can even be a verbal directive. And we know once that stimulus is presented into the environment, there should be some type of response. So now let's talk about stimulus and stimulus class. So when you see the term stimulus or stimuli, it's only referring to one. If you see stimulus class, it's more than one. So you're gonna have more than one stimuli. So to give you an example, let's say I have a class, which is a group of things, and we're just gonna make it right here. Let's put a group of things in this box. How about we put a car, bus, train, and we do M&Ms, um, Reese's, Snickers, and we do sunrise, alarm clock, and a second alarm clock. Okay. Well, this is a stimulus class. A stimulus, we would just pull out the individual things. Just one. Pull the car out, pull the M&Ms out, pull the sunrise out. Right? It's one individual thing versus a group of things. But when the stimulus is not just a group of any type of stimulus or anything, they have to share some kind of things. So let's talk about what they share, okay? So they're gonna share physical feature, They're going to share when they occur. And they're going to share what effect it has on the environment. All right. So let's take a look at it. So we know we have our one, but when we put it into car, bus, and train, what similarities do they have for you? Like when you when a car is presented, a bus is presented, or a train is presented, usually they're presented or they come, you're coming in contact with them when you're trying to do what? Get somewhere. So they all share that they're transportation. Okay. Eminem, Reese's, Snickers. What do they all have in common? They're all chocolate candy. So they share the same physical feature of being chocolate candy. Sunrise, so the sun rises, your alarm clock goes off. Of course you turn it off. Then the second alarm goes off and you get up. But all of these occur at the same time. So when they occur. Let's do it like this. They occur in the morning. So this will be when it occurs. All of the stimuli occurs in the morning. All the stimuli shares the same physical um, feature. And this is the effect it has on your, when it's talking about an environment, it's talking about you, your environment, or what, um, what how it comes in contact with you in the realm of what you're gonna be. Um, I would say basically what you would normally use it for or what it would cause you to do, okay? So here, remember, if it's one stimulus or stimuli, it's talking about one individual stimulus. If it's a class, you're gonna have the multiple stimulus but they're gonna either have the same effect on the environment, the same physical feature, or when it occurs, all right? Now, we can't talk about what happens first, which is the stimuli, without talking about what happens after it, which is the response. We're just gonna, so we can separate these a little bit. So 
So it's similar to the stimuli. If we have, okay, we're going to get a couple of these. So here we're going to look through the candy, we're going to pick one, and we're going to purchase. And then here, we're going to, we probably close the eyes. So here, again, if we take one out, we're only talking about a specific response instead of a class of responses. So here we're just going to take open door out. Here we'll take uh, pur purchase, where you're going to purchase. And here we'll just take out turn off clock. Okay. So it's the same thing. Response. When you see just response by itself, it's one. If you receive response class, you should be looking for multiple responses, okay? So let's just put it together real quick. So if you have a car or a car, bus, or a train as a stimulus class, it's going to cause you to open the door. Because before you can get into any of these, you need to open the door in order to get in. Um, if you see M&M's Reese's Sneakers or M&M, it, it may cause you to purchase the candy or you look through it, you'll pick the one you want, and then you'll purchase it. When the sun rises, you may close the blinds, turn off the clock, get up, but if you just turn off the clock, it's that one specific response. So you should always have the stimulus first and it's going to cause you to, or let's use evoke, it's going to evoke a response that you're going to do, okay? Usually when we're talking about responses, it just like the stimulus share, the response is going to share the same function, okay? So when you get your keys, you open your door and you start, it, it, and you look through the candy, you pick one, you purchase, this is gonna give you your access to the tangible item. All of these lead to you getting the candy. Um, I would say if you close the blinds, turn off the light, get up. And if you close, it, it's if you get your keys, you open your door, and you start. It's almost all of the examples I kind of picked are kind of leaning more towards access because you're going to get access to where you're going and tangible that is used, but it's basically into pretty much anything. Um, if you didn't get up, like if you turned it, closed the blinds, turned the clock off and laid back down. So let's change this to laid back down so we can get a different example. If you laid back down, it could be escape avoidance because you're avo avoiding having to get up right then but they all share the same function. You're closing the blinds so the light doesn't get in your eye. You're turning off the clock so that you can lay back down. And it would be escape. So real quick, I'm gonna introduce you to some functions that we use in ABA. What we say is the majority of behaviors that occur can fall into one of these categories. So the way I like to remember it, it's a cute little acronym. And the acronym is SEAT. So you have sensory. And sensory means a lot of it is inner or alone conditions. And then you have escape, avoidance, 
which means they're trying to get out and do something or you're avoiding doing something when your husband is um, sitting in a car an extra 30 minutes because he's avoiding having to come in and get his honey to-do list, that's avoidance. Um, attention. A lot of times the behavior is happening because you're trying to get the attention of someone or attention from something. Uh, and this last one is access to tangibles. These are the four main functions. You definitely will know these. We'll revisit them again later, but you want to know sensory, escape avoidance, attention, and access to tangible. We go to work so that we can access our paycheck. Um, we call our friends because we want to speak with them and get attention from them. Um, we may avoid calling some friends because we don't want to have to deal with their problems or they're long-winded or they want to tell us what's going on and want our opinion. And sensory, we may be kind of, uh, I would say, like fidgety or um, an individual may go out to smoke. Smoking is considered a, a sensory because you can't measure the agitation itself that happens, but you can measure the behavior of them going to smoke and you can look at the stimulus that happened before. So let's say that they were late for work, they got in trouble and a couple of seconds later they go smoke a cigarette or they are a telemarketer and someone was yelling at them over the phone and they're like, I need a cigarette break. So those are the things that we can measure, but we can't actually see the, the inner nerve fibers that are dangling around in their brain that's causing them that to want to smoke or crave to smoke. So that's how sensory works. But not to get off the subject, remember that stimulus is one. Stimulus class is multiple. They share a physical feature when they occur or the effect on the environment. If you have a stimulus, then you need to have a response. A response by itself, one. Response class, multiple responses, but they're gonna share the same functions. Sensory, escape, attention, access to tangible, or it could share a function as into getting you where you're going or a function of helping you fall asleep. So they can share a function that's similar to the effect that it's having on the environment. So I'll give you a second to look at that. And I hope it ties it up and makes a little bit more sense. And I'll see you in a little bit to talk about stimulus 